So the following problem is for you all who would like to solve about the nature of a protein. So how do you write the shorthand of it? Is it basic or is it acidic? What is PI? Stuff like that. So in this question, we're going to go over three main things. We're going to go over how to write the single letter sequence of this, which is mainly just memorization, how to find the overall charge of the protein at a specific pH, right? And we're going to use that to figure out whether it's acidic or basic. And then we're going to draw it out completely so we know what it looks like and show the charge groups, okay? So we have a peptide sequence, and we have these three hand, uh, shorthand letters for our amino acids, but we're going to read them out. So GLY stands for glycine. This is lysine, aspartic acid. We have leucine and glutamic acid, right? So... Part A tells us to write out the single letter sequence of this peptide and classify each of the amino acids. So the single letter shorthands for this will be G for glycine, and then we don't write any dashes, but we just write K for lysine, and we have aspartic acid is D, we have leucine is L, and we have glutamic acid is E, right? So this is our three letter shorthand. And then we want to classify each of its amino acids. Now, if we go to glycine, this glycine amino acid, it's R group, just has a, a hydrogen. That's it. So that's the R group of the amino acids. Notice that amino acids have three main components. It has the N terminus, right? It has the amino group. It has the carboxyl group. It has a hydrogen. And then it has an R group. And the R group is basically what separates each of the amino acids. And so for glycine, it's just H, a proton. Or not a proton, but hydrogen, right? That makes glycine actually polar. Because you have an N, you have an amino group, you have a carboxyl group on one end, and you just have hydrogens in the other. And so that carbon is actually polar, makes it polar, right? So this would be considered a polar amino acid, right? As for lysine, we have an amino group on the R group, right? You have a four carbon chain, and then you have an amino group. And so that makes it basic, right? As for aspartic acid and glutamic acid, from the name, you can tell that's acidic, right? Because it has a carboxyl group on it. And as for leucine, this has a non-polar R group on it, right? Leucine has four carbons, a four-carbon chain on its R group. That's, that's its R group, so it's a non-polar R group, right? So the, now we've classified each of the amino acids, and we've written three-hand shorthand. So now we want to figure out what's the overall charge of the peptide at pH 7. So... What I suggest you all do is make this little chart, right? And what this chart does, it, it organizes the amino acids and the groups on the protein. So C stands for the C terminus, right? So this is the tail end of the protein, which has a carboxyl group. Then N stands for the N terminus, which is the head of the protein, right? And then I've written out the names of all the amino acids that have a group that has a pKa. That means we've left out glycine and leucine because glycine and leucine cannot change their R group. This glycine remains with its hydrogen, leucine remains with its four carbon chain. It stays that way, it does not change. So there's no pKa for it. But aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and lysine have a group that can donate or accept a proton. And therefore, it does have a pKa. It can be acidic or basic, right? So C terminus, N terminus, and the three amino acids R groups have their pKa's, right? And what I've done is I've organized the pKa's from the lowest to highest. And you'll see that how this makes it easier, right? And then I've written a protonated tab and a deprotonated column, right? These are two columns, and uh, one that says protonated, second says deprotonated. So what does this mean? Well, what, what I want to do is figure out what is the charge when each of these is protonated, and what is the charge when it's deprotonated? This will help us figure out the overall charge. So for the C terminus, a carboxyl group, when it's protonated, has a charge of zero. Right? Aspartic acid and glutamic, glutamic acid also have carboxyl groups. So when they're pronated, they also have a, a charge of zero, right? However, for the N terminus and lysine, they have amino groups. So when they're protonated, they have a plus one charge on them, right? Now, however, when it's deprotonated, it's different, right? For the C terminus, aspartic acid, and glutamic acid, they all have a negative one charge when they're deprotonated. However, for the N terminus and lysine, they have a charge of zero, right? A neutral amine. So this is what happens when they're protonated and deprotonated. Now, how do we determine whether something is protonated or deprotonated? Well, it depends on the pH. We said the pH is 7. So just a reminder, if the pKa is less than the pH, right, that means the pH is way too basic for that group, and therefore it'll be deprotonated. However, 
if the pKa is higher than the pH, right? That means the pH is way too acidic for that group, and therefore it will be protonated. So what I'm going to do is find, I'll take my pH of 7, right? And I'm going to draw a line where it cuts the um, uh, pKa's in half. So we pKa of 2.2, that's not where it, go it goes. 2.2, 3.9, pH 7 is higher than that, higher than this, but it's less than 9.6. So I'm going to draw a little line here that splits between 4.3 and 9.6. That's where the pH is, right? And then I'm going to look. Anything below pH 7, so everything up here, will be deprotonated. So we're going to select these, right? And then everything below it is going to be protonated because the pH is way too acidic for it, right? And it's going to be over here, right? So we combine these numbers, and that's and we get a total charge of negative 1, right? So we have a negative 1 charge, total charge, right? So that's the total charge at pH 7. Now, what does that tell us for, about this protein at pH 7? Well, since we have a negative charge at pH 7, which is our neutrality point, this means this protein is acidic, right? Uh, and something that's acidic will generally have a negative charge or will be mainly or mostly deprotonated at that p at a pH of 7, right? Something that's basic, a protein that's basic, will be mostly protonated at pH 7. So this protein has a negative 1 total charge and it's acidic. Now, we also want to draw out our protein, right? And so a simple way to draw this out is this way, right? We start off with our N-terminus over here. And after that, we connect it to our central carbon. It's our alpha carbon, right? And it has the hydrogen, and it has the carboxyl group that will be connected to, this is the amide group, right? This is the amide link that connects with the amino acids together, right? And we have our hydrogen, and then we have our R group over here. So this right here is our R group. So what is this? This is glycine, right? This is glycine right here. Over here, this R group is for lysine. And same thing over, this is for aspartic acid, then we have leucine and glutamic acid. And then we have our C terminus over here, right? Our C terminus right here. And then we label the charges. So we said the N terminus and lysine would be positively charged at pH 7. Meanwhile, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and the C terminus would be negatively charged. And so we've shown the charges over here, we've shown the charges over here, and we've drawn the structure. Now, Note this isn't like the exact way how the protein looks, but it's the simplest way of drawing it with straight lines, and it would be it would count as a valid drawing for the peptide. So this is how you draw that peptide, and essentially, it's just a repeating pattern. You have the N terminus, the C terminus, the amide bonds that are between the amino acids, and all you have to do is just show the R groups in the correct order for the protein. So that is how to solve all three problems or all three questions of this problem.